glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time, and it's time to talk about a position battle. Man. And this one is going to be one heck of a battle, I think, um, because this room is absolutely stacked from one to five. Somebody's not going to make it, and these guys are definitely going to be out there battling. One of them's new to the team. One of them came as an undrafted free agent. We've got Wayne Gallman versus Jamichael Hasty. This is huge, and since I look the most like a running back, I'll go first. That's smart. Um, <laughs> Um, the thing with me here is Wayne Gallman seems to have a huge advantage. He's got about 400 career carries in the NFL. He's ran for over 1,500 yards total. Um, he's got about 30 catches, and I think Hasty has like 43 total touches in the NFL. So at first glance, it would definitely give Wayne Gallman a huge advantage, but it can also be a huge disadvantage here. Because if their play is anywhere close, they're going to go with the guy that's only in his second year and has less touches, less mileage, less wear on him. So it's a blessing and a curse. It might lead him to outplay all these other guys even further up than Hasty, but it also might lead him right off the team. Because we know how running backs are treated these days, and everyone's got their marks about wear and you know all that. They want the fresh young legs. So this is going to be really interesting. I think Gallman's got the advantage as far as vision and blocking and, you know, things that veteran running backs would have the advantage at and maybe probably power. But if you're talking just pure athleticism, you know, agility, speed, all that stuff, it's definitely got to go to hasty, right? Um, You know what? That is a good question, Horst. Uh, talking about agility, speed, and all that. Um, the one thing that I've come to enjoy is is Wayne Gallman's running style. Mm -hmm. I like the way that he gets up inside on these vertical runs and makes one cut and then finds the hole and goes. Um, that is something I've come to grow and like, and I really do think that he is going to be hard to beat out. I think that his vision is very good, um, and I, I think that the, the more I watch him, the more I enjoy his style. Uh, he's got a little bit of a forward lean. Um, he attacks holes. Uh, some some running backs are really afraid to just get in the hole and attack it. He is not afraid to do that. Um, Jamichael Hasty is somebody that I enjoy watching because he he has all kinds of moves. Um, he has good vision, but he doesn't have a great vision. And I think that is the one area that he needs to clean up from last year compared to this year. If you go back and watch some of the film of Jamichael Hasty, there are times he runs into defensive players or runs into the back of running or of uh, the fullback or lineman. And he could have found a hole. Um, sometimes there was no hole, so that's understandable. But I think that is one area he needs to clean up, which is a distinct difference from what you're getting from Wayne Gallman. The emphasis also that makes it harder for Jamichael Hasty, the emphasis on the interior run game from the 49ers drafting the two big guards, um, obviously setting that into motion is also a kind of, I guess, check in the box for Wayne Gallman because he's going to be able to attack the inside run game so much more. He's bigger. He's more physical where I think Jamichael Hasty wants to make his living on the outside edge in the zone, catching the ball in the backfield. He's more of the Jarek McKinnon style of player without that elite speed. So when we're looking at there is a distinct stylistic difference between these two. Um, I think Jamichael Hasty has a little bit of a harder time making this team because I think Goldman is going to excel in this interior run, and I think Jamichael Hasty might struggle there. But if his vision is better and he's able to find these holes on this outside zone, he can definitely create a niche for him in this offense and put pressure maybe on a different player besides Wayne Gallman to actually make this roster. No, that's a that's a great point right there. And that that was going to be the emphasis for me is before the draft, I don't think anyone really thought, even before they brought in Wayne Gallman and signed him to his contract, right? I don't think any of us in this room would have thought that Jermichael Hasty didn't have a great opportunity to make this roster. Yeah, exactly. I think we all thought he was maybe not locked in, but man, he had a pretty nice little path to make this 53-man roster and to be a, a, a force 
in this running back room because we were all envisioning him as that Jarek McKinnon replacement. Goleman signing, everyone's a little like, oh, that's interesting. And then the draft moves happen, right? And they bring in the two big bodied linemen and all of a sudden it's starting to click, right? Things are starting to add up. Hey, maybe, just maybe, the 49ers run game is about to change. Yeah. Maybe the way they're going to go about attacking the run game is about to be different. And if that's the case, then the Goleman signing makes sense. And now Jermichael Hasty is completely on the outside looking in because those aren't his strengths. We've seen him have some so show some flashes, right? The Bobby Wagner goal line touchdown where he takes the hit from Bobby Wagner and stretches out over the top. That's great. But Bobby Wagner was about a half an inch away from stopping him short. Wayne Gallman couldn't power his or excuse me, Jermichael Hasty couldn't power his way out of that. Yeah. Wayne Gallman, you've seen the type of runner he has been, especially with the New York Giants, and especially last season for the New York Giants. The things he was able to do in the goal line. He was a guy that they were able to trust in short goal line situations to punch the ball in. It's not always the big, big physical right at you, run you over type of thing. Sometimes it's the un, you know, the little unique athleticism, his vision, jumping over the top of the pile, being able to punch it in. He's a crafty running back. His vision is definitely right now better than Hasty's. So Hasty, like you said, is going to have to improve those things if he wants an opportunity to climb his way onto the roster. But maybe going after a guy like Gallman isn't his best path. Yeah, he, it might be better to try to beat out, you know, Earl. Earl. Elijah. Elijah, thank you. It might be better, you know, to beat out Elijah Mitchell um, because that he's maybe somebody a little more similar, but that's going to be hard because they use draft capital on Mitchell. So, I mean, and I think that Mitchell has a, a very unique running style in the fact that he's a slash runner, which the 49ers don't have a lot of slash guys. So I like him. I, I think where Jamichael Hasty, another place he can kind of – maybe carve his role out in this team is with Wilson Jr. out. He could be a guy in the pass game that could be successful. Um, I do think that all these guys can be successful in the pass game, but maybe Hasty can be better than some of them. We saw it. What's the first play that he ran when he played against New York? Was he caught the ball out of the backfield? On oh, a nice little slant. Yeah, and they put him out wide so or in the slot. Yeah. But they used him and got him the ball right away. You don't see that very often. So they show a lot of confidence in him. Maybe that's the avenue he needs to attack is diversify himself that way so that way he can make this roster because this is an uphill climb for him. Yeah, I definitely agree with you because, you know, anytime you're an undrafted guy, unless you really stand out like the way Mostert does with his speed, and obviously he's made plays in games on that Super Bowl run especially, um, you know, unless you're looking like that, it's really hard to make the team. Um, they paid Goleman. They used capital on Elijah Mitchell, not Earl Mitchell. Um, two different sized guys. <laughs> Same first letter of their name. Didn't it's realize true. Earl Mitchell was playing running back this year. It's an interesting transformation. It would be hard to stop on the goal line. Sure. Eat that, Bobby Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't talk, you ain't stopping him. Mm -mm. But yeah, it's it, it's gonna be an uphill battle for Hasty. Honestly, I know a lot of people like him. I know a lot of people were big on him being the breakout guy. But I I really don't see him making the fifty three man unless there's injuries. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the big thing right there for him. That's going to be his easiest path on the roster. And, I, and you know, we on the cutback, we've been Jermichael Hasty guys and supporters. Uh, and we don't Man. think he's a bad running back. He's not a bad running back, but this room is loaded now. And the emphasis and the shift for this 49ers run game makes it darn near impossible. Like Horst just said, the, the most likely scenario is injuries piling up and Jermichael Hasty just being a guy that we're familiar with. He knows the system. We're comfortable. We know he can go out there and get to the right spots and hit the holes and do the things we need him to do. But he's not going to be a world beater. He's not going to be a game breaker right now. And listen, Gallman hasn't been a world beater or a game breaker, but he's been a very, very good running back in this league and solidified running back in this league. He can get touches, eat touches. You know, he, he's a reliable back. And like you've said plenty of times on this show, in a Kyle Shanahan system, right? If you have a running back, a good running back, they can be great. Yep. Great can be elite. And mm -hmm. if Wayne Gallman's good, he could be great. And Gallman could have Alfred Morris type numbers. If he gets enough carries, this <laughs> guy could awesome. yeah, this guy could blow up in that he's that build and he's kind of got that similar running style. Mm -hmm. And I think he could be very successful. I'm I'm super high on this guy. I think a lot of people can tell now because I've been kind of spitting this out there and putting it out there. Um, when I when I like someone, I make sure that I put it out there and let everyone know because um, there's just something special about some of these guys. And running backs in general, I just I will latch on to them and I won't let it go. And I'm not going to let it go. If Wayne Goldman fails, um, I will be completely shocked. Yeah, Wayne Goldman, I was going to say, reminds me of 
A, kind of a mix of Alfred Morris and Tevin Coleman. Okay, I like The that. way he runs. Okay. Like, I think he reminds me a lot of Coleman as far as his vision. Right. Because I thought Coleman was always really talented at that, being able to see the holes before they open, type of thing. And then I thought his one foot in the ground and just get going reminded me a lot of Morris. And the fact that maybe he's not, you know, he's not a 4'4 guy. He's also not 225. He's also not... You yeah, know, he's somewhere in the middle on all the different stats, but somehow he makes it work. His vision too is great, but the the fact that he's patient, you know, being patient in this offense is important. That a lot of times Mostert will outrun the blocks and not see the actual cutback because of the speed. It's like when you're playing Madden and you just hold the the button the whole <laughs> time and you outrun your blocks. That is what happens here. Um, sometimes with Mostert, where Gallman and and I think Sermon will be the same way. They're going to be super patient. That is also an area where Jamichael Hasty, if he could improve on, would help him a lot and have give him a chance to make this roster. Patience is the key in Kyle Shanahan's system. You got to know when to go slow and when to hit the Jets and get going. If they can do it, they can be successful in the system. If not, they will be on a one way track somewhere else where they'll get an opportunity because this team is stacked. Oh. And remember, kids. The cutback is the most important part. Absolutely. Ooh, I like the wink. I, I agree there 100%. Seeing the cutback, right? Seeing the cutback, the running back position, huge. Seeing the cutback and being a member of the cutback crew, even huger. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell, like the video, share it with the rest of the faithful, and most importantly, let us know about this position battle. Hasty, Gallman, which one do you got and why? The key thing, the why. We want to hear from you. We want to have this discussion and this conversation with you down below. And while you're down there, scroll just a little bit further in that description section and go copy yourself some 49ers Cutback merch. The merch shop live. It's open. Tons of great 49ers inspired gear and still plenty of 49ers inspired gear to come as well as Cutback Crew merch, which you know you love. You know yep. you want to cop it. Yeah, I, I pretty much wear it on every episode at this point. It's just too good. Um, and I know you'll enjoy it as well, so make sure you go get your shirt. So that way you can wear it everywhere as well um, because you want everyone to know about the 49ers Cutback. I know we want everyone to know about the 49ers Accurate. Cutback. But also you want everyone to know that they can join and have great conversations. We can have differing opinions and still be able to talk 49ers football, still be able to enjoy it because it's not about having the same opinion. It's about having opinions about our team that we can converse about and then come to an understanding. Either we agree, we disagree. The good thing is we have a conversation because that's the best part. Remember, spend $500 at the Cutback Store and Alex will come to your birthday party. I don't know if we can back that up yet, but we can look into it. Who knows? Depends Never on know. where your birthday party is. That also. East Coast, probably <laughs> off Anywhere the table. Anywhere from here to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you yeah, were in no. California. I was like, that's doable. Pittsburgh, California, 100% doable. Pittsburgh, yeah. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I don't know about that. I have a wedding to pay for. So let's let's just let's table, let's Priorities. table that for another time. Priorities. That could be it could be another time. I, I don't know why it just doesn't work for DoorDash. Probably, you know, that would help. That yeah. would help. That's something I should definitely look into. Priorities. Hey, hey, hey DoorDash, go ahead and uh, sponsor this video. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be we nice. do love DoorDash. <laughs> we do. It, it helps when you're in a recording studio yeah. for a while and you get do food delivered right to you. But hey. And you know who delivers food right to you? DoorDash. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> we, we love this conversation. This is a great conversation. We still got tons of position battles still to come. A lot of things to talk about. It's going to be an exciting time. Cutback crew, we love you. And until next time, 49ers fans, you stay safe. Remember the right way. It's always the 49ers way.